Welcome to a new episode of Boost My Build where I take one of you guys' PC power picker list and I upgrade it for around the same price and I give you a much better gaming PC build in terms of price to performance. If you want to be featured next, follow the instructions down below in the video description where you will also find the PC build I will talk about today and also the PC build that I do recommend buying for the price. This is a video idea from Jason from the PC Builder YouTube channel, so big shout out to him and you will also find his YouTube channel in the video description. With that being said, let's start. So this is Gus and he told me, hey, looking to build my first gaming PC, can you give me some advice on my parts list? Before giving you my advice, there's not much information about this list. So I don't know if you want to play at 1440p, 4K, 1080p, or what's your max budget and your favorite title. So I don't have much information about what this guy wants, but I did make two different lists in case you have different needs. First, let's take a look at his list for $1,500, which I want to say that it's a really good list. And if you put it together, you're going to have an amazing 1440p gaming performance, even 4K, depending on the game and the settings. But I feel like we can do much better in terms of gaming performance at this price point. So for the CPU, you have the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which I actually do not like at this price point since we are losing performance on the GPU by spending this amount of money on the CPU, especially if you are going to buy a 360 all-in-one liquid cooler, which I will talk about in a second. But since I don't know what games you play, maybe you want to play really high demanding CPU titles on low settings at 1080p. And in that case, then the 7800X 3D would make sense but I do not like the idea of having a 360 all-in-one liquid cooler for this CPU because it's super power efficient and you are overspending on your CPU cooler money that you can spend on a better GPU. Then for the motherboard, you have a great motherboard, the ASRock P650E PG Riptide. This one has Wi-Fi, plenty of features. It also comes with BIOS flashback, so really good motherboard and I have no complaints on your choice there. Then same with the memory, you have 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, at 6000 MHz CL30, really fast timings, decent price, not the best price but it's decent, and the same goes with your storage, you went with 2TB of Gen4 SSD, which is great, and if you need more than 1TB, then that's totally fine, I will respect it, and I will not go down to 1TB in order to get more performance from the GPU. Then for the GPU, you have the RX 6800 XT, which is a great GPU, especially at 450 bucks, but I wouldn't recommend it for a $1,500 PC build. If we are talking about a budget of $1,000 to $1,100, then it makes much more sense, but at $1,500, I don't see the level of performance, I think you should be getting either more performance or a newer architecture. Then for the case you have the Montec Air 903. This one is actually pretty good for 75 bucks. In my opinion, it's not the best in terms of price or performance. I feel like you can get the same level of airflow on a different case for a cheaper price at the moment, but it's actually a pretty good case. And if you like the aesthetics, that's totally fine since you're not overspending your money here. Then for the power supply, you have a great unit, the Corsair RM750E. This is 8 year rated, really good quality, but there's a power supply right now on the market for around 90 bucks that has 850 watts and it's also 8 year rated. So the total price for your system is 1500 bucks, really good PC if you put it together, but I believe we can do much better here. First, I will talk about the system that I do recommend you buying for $1514, so about $12 more expensive than the one that you were going to buy. And this one has the AMD Ryzen 5 7600, but for the GPU, you get the RX 7900 XT. This is going to be a much faster GPU for gaming than the one you had, the RX 6800 XT. For you to have an idea on a 15 game average at 1440p high to ultra settings, on high demanding titles, the RX 6800 XT was able to average 105 FPS, while the 7900 XT has an average of 140 FPS, and that's a huge performance difference. And then at 4K, the 6800 XT is able to average over 60 FPS and the 7900 XT over 80. So it's not only a much better option for 1440p, but also for 4K and 1080p, even though I would not recommend you buying a 1080p monitor for this type of budget. So yes, even though we have the Ryzen 5 7600 on my build, you're getting a much higher level of performance because of that GPU difference. 
On top of that, you get more VRAM and also you get AV1 encoding, which is helpful for streaming on YouTube. But I do not know if you want to stream or not. As I said before, I do not have much information on your needs. For the rest of the components, I changed the power supply to the 850 watt power supply I was talking about before, the Enermax Revolution the F2. This is 80 rated, so amazing unit, more wattage, so it's more operable down the line as well, and you will have no issues. I kept your memory kit, your storage, and your case, since I have no issues with those components and then I changed the motherboard. I downgraded it a little bit but you're not going to notice any difference because the Pro RS has plenty of features for gaming and it's going to be really really good. Also if you want a different case because here we have a micro ATX motherboard with an ITX mid tower case down below in the video description you have this system with a case alternative just in case you want to match the motherboard size with the case size. And then for the CPU cooler we have the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin 120. This one is not necessary for the Ryzen 5 76 hundred. you can get away even with the stock cooler and stay under 1500 bucks but i believe it's a nice to have since maybe down the line you want to upgrade to the 7800x3d and this cpu cooler is going to be able to handle even that cpu so for 1514 dollars you are getting a 34 percent faster performance on average for gaming and then the other system is similar to the one that you have with the 7800x3d the same motherboard memory and storage but i changed the power supply to a two 240 only one liquid cooler in case you want a liquid cooler from deep cool as well it's actually the same liquid cooler but instead of being 360 is a 240 which is going to be plenty of airflow anyway for this ryzen 7 then i changed the power supply to the 8 tier rated i've mentioned before from enermax and i changed the case to the fantex eclipse g300a that's going for just 40 dollars but it does come with only one fan pre install in the back and that's why i also added three extra fans from thermal ride for just 13 dollars and then the most important part i changed the gpu to the rx 7800 xt even though it's really similar in terms of gaming performance as the 6800 xt here you get a newer architecture with av1 encoding as well which as i said before is helpful if you are streaming and it's also more power efficient than the 6800 xt the price for this one is 1505 dollars so about the same price as the one that you were going to buy, but here you are getting a newer GPU instead. And if you want a PC build for a different budget, let's say you have $2,000 or maybe you have less than 1000 I do recommend you watching my video on the best PC builds of the month. You will have that one in the top right of the screen. And those PC builds have no bottleneck and they are going to be amazing in terms of price to performance, depending on your needs and your budget. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.